domestic bank we want to get, and maybe like a, a foreign bank, or even foreign investment service, anything, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. the foreign investment service might be a good idea right now. Just because how, how correlated are they with our economy? You know what I mean? Uh, they're pretty closely tied, I think. I think so. They generally are, except for the fact that our dollar yeah. value is crossing. Which could be a good thing. If we buy a foreign bank, they're probably dumping more money into our economy because their dollars are buying more than ours. Right, but at the same time, eventually that dip is going to stop and it's going to come back. Right. We're going to lose lose values on that investment. See, we, we would rather buy over there when our dollar's high and then it falls. Um, but then again, I, you know, according it, to the experts, according to, well, I wouldn't say the experts, but the expert moves are right now, GE is moving a lot of investment opportunities, like 30 or 40% of their portfolio over to the European sector. So, so the, GE is? Uh, I, think, I think it was GE. It might be Chevron, but it was either GE or Chevron. I think it did kind of move, move away from just stock market uh, quantities. And this is just kind of balance sheet stuff. This was the second view up here. And um, one of the interesting ones here is, is that sustainable growth. And there, Morgan Stanley uh, is at tw is that 21%. Sachs is another one at 27. Um, uh, the PEG ratio, which is like price per earnings. PE ratio, can you just think, how long is it going to take me to, to double my money? Um, the PEG uh, ratio is, I think, the forward, uh, if I'm not mistaken, forward PE over EPS, earnings per share. Um, the forward PE is, I think, not the, the price per earnings calculated now, but I think it's it's, a it's projected. It's a projected. It's taken over a year. It's averaged out for a year. Um, so this is, you could just have to just go. Um, but basically, if you see that this is high, then, then um, it's almost like, okay, growth's going this way, but price is shooting up, and, and not a lot of gains are going to be realized when they eventually meet a point X. If it's low, then you figure... It's under here, and eventually those the price will rise to meet the growth of the company. So that's basically what it means. This is a low. So if it's one, is it the shadow? If it's one, yeah, you can almost think of it as yeah, just being, you know, the the market's valuing the company as it should. But I mean, if you have this, you you, you might have um, you might have a high PEG ratio. Suddenly on a day when hey um, you know the analysts haven't yet gotten to that stock to correct its real growth and suddenly let's say they find oil or Chevron finds oil in the middle of nowhere when actually so actually this curve there just might be an information lag and this curve is going to move up like this and then this curve is going to move here so I mean there is some you have to consider lagging information you know right now Chicago Mercantile Exchange does have you know for the sector a fairly high PEG ratio so maybe the price is. Wells Fargo is about where it should be. It's about one. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is because it's outperforming everyone. Yeah, else. I, I, that's what like I'm saying. CBS, that Spain bank, or that other, like that Columbia bank, the big one. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. It's the Germans. I think, I think they know what they're doing. Well, I, think, <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I don't doubt that. The only. The only. The only. The only issue is. Or do you want to stay on target? Well, let's just, let's just decide if we want to get Wells Fargo right now. Yeah, I think Wells, Wells, Fargo's, Wells, Fargo's, Wells, Fargo's, Wells, Fargo's, Wells Fargo's locked up. Is it locked up? Well, let's just finish that. Let's just <laughs> right now. Are you going to put another 2% in the foreign? Uh, I didn't think so. I thought UBS was. Is that revenue growth uh, projection? Uh, revenue growth projection. No, this is uh, for the past three years. Oh, for the past three years? Oh, yeah, okay. this one's in the future. This one's in the future. Though. Okay. Um, 6.7, so that might consider that UBS might be undervalued. Or there's going to be some kind of correction. Uh, but then again, um, Deutsche Bank is comfortably in that area as well. This one might be a little bit more on target. Okay, so you see where those things make sense? Um, UBS, 
is uh, worse in their 12 months cash returns, uh, but they're a little bit more stable in their returns overall. Um, I can't read uh, what that cat slash, what is that? Cat? Underneath uh, the returns, like uh, 2003 return percent? Yes, brain. it's a uh, uh, category or Index industry. Or industry? Yeah, so basically, um, it's in the it's it's a reverse kind of percentile. So if it's ninety eight, just think of it out of a hundred ones. Okay. Out of hundred, they would be coming ninety eight. Uh, so you know, I think the only one here to come in second was either Goldman Sachs or Chicago Mercantile. It was Chicago Mercantile. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. So we'll get right there. Okay. Well, I can't. I, I think for a foreign, I, I think I, that's that's pretty good. They're Which gonna, one? They're gonna operate out of the euro anyway, so we don't have to worry about it there. I think we can get longer. Um, Deutsch? Deutsch. I, I really didn't give dividends enough thought until I thought about, like, you know, the demand is going to increase for that stock if the dividends are increasing, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's one of those things where, but the price might, might come into it. Might, it's probably going to correct it very quickly. Well, if they're all really close, then take a look at the technicals. There's not a lot of selling lately. Do I have a feeling they can get like either of them or what? Well, no, I mean, uh, well, right, because again, our performance of dollars making all these companies look. Well, these guys look like they're going to tank a little bit, but uh, not enough to really cause great. So in other words, the bullish range is probably better. Probably. Doesn't uh, it seem a little in, like it could be undervalued in, in, in the, the trends? In the short term, though, in the short term, uh, I haven't liked this mm -hmm. uh, solely because uh, it's quite possible that, for whatever reason, they like to cover gaps. Stocks do. So if you ever see this, mm -hmm. on the short side, it's uh, it can be a good thing. Either way, I think the price-wise, it would be like, well, it didn't like that. Two, did two, two credit, three stocks for it. Yeah, and one Deutsch stock. Well, when you're thinking about that, you really got to look at how many shares there are, you know what I mean? Uh, it's true. It's the same thing like the Wells Fargo deal. You know, there's so many shares that that's why the price is so low. Yeah. That's, that's the same reason why Berkshire is $100,000 a share. Never split the stock price. Never. Ever. He saw no point in it. And I was trying to think about that, and I, I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of because I mean it's still pretty much the same value. You don't gain or lose anything well, per se. You do attract a higher dollar because you can buy investors. more. Uh, oh, oh, if it's more expensive, you attract so higher they, dollar yeah. investors. Yeah. It's just it's, so they answer to a small group. This over here on the longer side again makes me nervous. Uh, so if we buy now, we're probably going to be buying in closer to 140. I think that's where it's at right now. Yeah, 139. Uh, it, it makes me nervous. Uh, we could probably get a better deal. Uh, so it's going to go just a little bit further. 